It's a dangerous mode. Not what I like. So, before we even start, what is all of this? What could this be? Hmm. Okay, let me introduce myself. My name is Carl Valentine, the creator of Live 2. Like history. I'm gonna go straight and dissect right through. These are basically called, let me just chuck this to the side. These are called peptides. Peptides are natural healing properties within the body. So this isn't, you know, steroids or anything harmful, etc. etc. I want to say one thing real quickly. I am not a doctor, so whatever you do, you do it at your own risk. I'm just documenting my journey, and this may help somebody, it may not, but I'm always gonna post things out there that could possibly help somebody. So these are healing properties. Peptides are produced naturally in the body. So what, what is this, basically? Oh my God, I'm gonna dissect and, and take you through what I am taking. Let me give you a little story, a little run through real quickly. So, I had a shoulder injury a while ago, actually. Had a shoulder injury a while ago. And it got very, very bad. I didn't know what to do. Went to GP, NHS, put me through physio. Nothing happened. I thought, you know what? I might actually have, you know, have to go through surgery because I didn't know what to do. And then somebody told me, somebody told me who has great knowledge, which I want to shout out to them, has great knowledge within the gym, training, the body, how it functions. They told me about peptides. They introduced me to peptides. I had to do my own research as well out of it. And I started to understand that peptides were natural healing process in the body. I didn't just go and take it. I had to understand what it does in the body and how it heals. Studies are still going on and on about these. Some people say it's not for human consumption, etc. etc. We're not going to go into too much details. Done my own research on peptides. I started taking peptides a while ago. I made a video about this on YouTube. And what happened? Shoulders actually miraculously healed. It's healed fully. I can do so many things. I couldn't even do this a while ago because my shoulder injury was bad. Lifting heavy weights all the time. That's what we gym people do. You are not a robot. Your body is going to have no, even if it's not injury niggle and tweaks and stuff like that within the body so you need to understand how to nurture yourself care for yourself and continue to keep scaling within your health and your wealth and fitness as i stated i do have a video about my journey about this back in 2021 which i will link below in this video so in fast forward to 2023 more like 2022 i'd say i was doing crazy 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 I was doing crazy jump squats. Everybody knows I've been doing jump squats for years and years and years. Do not try this at home. This is a very dangerous exercise you see in the jumping squats. <laughs> Let me just say one thing real quickly. Jump squats are not bad for your knees. Jump squats are only bad for your knees when you start lifting way too heavy. So weights well over 100 kgs. I don't know why I went to 100, I went to 120, I did 140, I did 160, I did 180, I went up to almost 200 kg jump squats. I would never recommend anybody do that. Health and safety, your health is truly important. You need to start to realize that you are a human being. You are a human being and your body is gonna have wear and tears. Over the time I've dreamed up squats, over the years, felt nothing. I'm good, I'm invincible. I don't know, a gym bro told me one time, was like one of the gym, one of the gym managers that told, one of the gym, actually staff, sorry, told me one time, you need to be careful. You know, you're, you're gonna, you may, you know, hurt your knees because jumping squats are very heavy. And so it's so ironic, like weeks after the weeks after that, or let's say a short time after that, what happened? My knees started to hurt, it was like little tweaks. And it just started to get worse and worse and worse. But not too bad, as it would affect my daily life, but it's just, when I'm doing a leg day, for example, 
my knees will burn. Like my knees will burn like crazy. And I knew something's not right. I need to do something about this. Otherwise it's gonna get worse. And I had to go see a GP, waste my time doing physio. Before you know they're gonna refer you to surgery. And I do not want any sort of surgery. So I thought to myself, oh yeah, peptides. This way we go back into the peptides, healing properties. So let me just start taking peptides. I've got my own crazy knowledge. I've studied hours and hours on, on all of this stuff. Let me do my own, you know, start taking peptides again and let me just heal my knees naturally. So I want to say one thing real quickly. People out there, wish you train safe. Keep away from the ego. It's not, it's not about ego lifting. Even if you're jumping squatting with good form, jumping over 140, why? Why do you need to be jumping over 140? Why do you need to be jumping over 160? Why do you need to be jumping to squatting 200 kgs? Like, it's just not realistic. It's just for social media. Just people don't understand the dangers. It's not just jump squats. Any type of exercise that is just crazy dangerous, be mindful. You're a human being. Wear and tear. Going back to peptides anyway, and I love giving a good story time. Going back to peptides, I'm going to show you what I take. I'm going to give you a breakdown of everything. I'm going to, you know, go through the whole mix of everything together, injecting it into my system. So you just see how it basically just functions and works. What's this? This is basically BPC-157. BPC-157 is a compound. It is a peptide compound. And again, most people are not going to know what I'm talking about. That's okay. You kind of get the summary of this anyway. BPC-157 stands for body protective compound. Again, for the back people who are not here, body protective compound. And 157 is the kind of formula that, that's in there. So many different types of peptides. The BBC 157 is a healing property. What does it do? Helps with gut issues, helps with your heart, helps with your fun um, brain functions, helps with, you know, IBS even, helps with so many factors, even helps with, with healing tendons, so I'm going to ligaments, muscles, yes, you actually do heal. Even if you're quite far off and you're, you're really so much in excruciating pain, you have to take this longer, it can heal over time. As I keep saying, I am not a licensed doctor. I don't recommend you to take any of this. You do stuff at your own risk. Ah! Right, where were we? Okay. BPC-157, often referred to as Wolverine Serum. This peptide speeds up healing, like all tissue healing, injuries, gut healing, uh, muscle recovery. Remarkable, it's a remarkable peptide. It's one of the most studied and one of the most well-known. If you are a performing athlete, I'm sure people don't say this, they must be taking stuff like this. They'll never tell you online, but they must be taking safe stuff like this to maintain over time. Think about it, you're training, lifting heavy, even if you're lifting with good form. Over time, your body's gonna have wears and tears. You need to think to yourself, how am I gonna phase my training cycles? You know, you had, I talk about periodization, having good training cycles, having, you know, you start off with the slow building up phase, the hypertrophy phase, the strength phase, etc., etc. How am I gonna add these kind of stuff into my training cycle so when, I'm, when i have my off time so when you so for, for example with me every as i said before every you know two to four months of training somewhere between there i'll take two weeks off some athletes what they tend to do is they will dose a low dosage of bpc 157 during a time off so they heal even if they're not feeling any niggling it's just so they fully heal allow the body to recover from from any underlying wears and tears that they're never aware of so you can take this you know even if you want to do throughout life but low dosages so you can keep yourself healthy keep your ligaments strong and maintain yourself throughout one thing i'd always say as well i know this is very a lot of information i want to say to want to say this to a lot of people as well because i've been studying about my compounds a lot of people can take this with uh, a healing natural growth hormone so it's anything like i don't know mk677 which is a natural type of growth hormone that helps with the healing property it helps binding things together it helps le healing ligaments tendons just makes just makes you slowly get back to where you need to be effects of that is you are more hungry though and let's break this even further down. so you cannot see my hands but you know hello hey hand model hand model in the building <laughs> All right, so the first thing I tend to do, make sure your hands are clean, you're on a clean platform, everything around has been sanitized. Health is truly wealth. So, what you wanna do first, we're gonna use the back water, not sure if you can see, this is this um, special water, call it the antibacterial water that you're gonna put inside the BPC-157. So, this is a new one. I bought, I bought this as a prop. So this is basically how it would look when you buy it. Obviously you take the hatch out. But this is one I've already bought before. 
and I've kind of used it already. So this, by the way, this is all goes in the fridge. The bottles of this goes in the fridge, and once you're not using of this, BPC-157 goes in the freezer because it helps preserve it longer. The special, I call it the special water, always stays in the fridge, it doesn't need to be frozen. So, take this off. Boo -doo -doo -doo. Right, first thing I do is I, I'm a clean freak, you know, so I'm going to clean this. Again, I tell people to do your own research on BPC-157. I am not a licensed doctor. You do things at your own risk, but if you want to really heal, get rid of, get eliminate any type of injury, BPC-157. There's another compound called TB-500. So the bad goes here, the good is here, okay? So that's been sterilized. You get your insulin syringe. Take it out, put it on this side. Now this is only 50 units and we need to put three milliliters of this water inside here and because this is only 50 units that's going to be we're going to do this four times because 100 100 units is basically one milliliter so we're going to do this four times this may take some time we're going to put this inside here again so take this i'll make sure this is nice and tight and then we take the bottom out so the reason again why we have more than one uh needle is because as you're taking your as you're going in and out and set in and out in and out in and out in and out the blunt it gets weak when it's when you're actually going to inject this into your body the injection needs to be sharp hence why we always have a spare one so once you finish doing all your in out in outs and it goes inside here you throw it away you, you always want to inject with a sharp fresh blade so again this is a lot of information and i tell people listen you do things at your own risk this is this is what i do to commit to stay healthy healthily so the first thing you do, because it's only 50 units, I wish I'd got a, I wish I'd got 100 units syringe or I'd got one, a, one milliliter, it's gonna be a bit long. So when you're drawing it into here, the uh, backwater, you must always get the exact amount of air. So if I'm gonna do 50 units, as you can see, I'm gonna make sure I do 50 units of air. Put it to the side, like this. But first you always do remember, with the other one, so this is still clean, remember, this is still clean. Just make sure this is clean. This is the other clean one. Haven't touched anything. Make sure this is clean. Health and safety first. We take it in from the side. So we insert from the side, bosh. And then we draw the air in, which makes it easier for the water to come out. So we take it up to the side, draw it, and then we have 50. It's really not that deep, we get used to it after a while. Uh la, 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 la. There we go, 50. I'm gonna speed this up in a short while because literally we're the same thing. So in here, you take it to the side. So this is the first one of four. So in, we now insert it in. Boom, there we go. We need to see that BPC 157 on display. There we go, 5 mg. Boom. So what do we do now? We slowly take it out. Remember, every time you insert it, the blunt, this gets weaker. We draw another 50 units of air and we do the same thing again. So going in, putting it through. And now I'm gonna speed this up so you understand the concept. In 10, <laughs> nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Two, do you know what? I only see. Let me. Let me. I want you to see the second. This the second part of this. So you just get used to it. So in. This is going to be number two. This is going to be exactly one milliliter. We need three. So we're doing the six times, aren't we? Actually. Anyway, so this is going to be one liter. We need another four more. So I'm going to speed this up. Time lapse. <laughs> I want to say one thing quickly. I'm not sure if you can see that the, you see how it's getting weaker now. It's starting to bend. You know what I do? You know what I do in this instance? I just leave it as this. I will close it quietly. I would close this too. Put it in the bad section, and I'll get another one. I have to keep it nice and sharp. And I'll also replace it with another one as well, just in case. You always need to become prepared. In life, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So let's continue. Okay, so I want to say one thing real quickly. You'll notice as the water gets higher and higher, it starts to dilute. 
the, the pressure gets stronger. So when you when you draw the needle inside, you're gonna see, it's gonna, as you can see, look, it pushes it back. Look, look, look what happens. It pushes it back. Why? Because of the, it's the pressure, it's the air pressure. Okay, and then we take it out safely to the side. Keep our hands on it. You've got to be, you know, skilled at this. You get used to it after a while. And then you take it up from the side. There you go. This is this is what we need. This is it in full, in full motion. So, like I said, we now put this away. Okay. Now, because everything's mixed together, you want to roll it gently. You just roll it gently. It's a, it's a very, very delicate peptide, so you need to be very careful with it. You can't shake it, you don't want to be harsh, you don't want to throttle it, it's just slow movements like this. And then we take it down, slowly up. Down, up, in the jungle. Oh, in the web, in the jungle. The liar sleeps tonight. Back me up, a wee. <laughs> okay, so we just you just do this for a few minutes. You just take your time. Make sure it's fully mixed in together. So that's what you do. Down and up, down and up. You can see when you fully it's fully clear inside. You know the BP one five seven is clear. You don't see any particles inside. Then you are ready to inject. Let's go. Legs. Time to inject. If you have made it this far, you, shame on you, shame on you, you mortals. If you have made it this far, <laughs> now we inject. So the first thing you do, put everything onto this side because there's not enough space. You shall be standing, but I can't stand because there's no space in here. UK houses are small. Okay, so now we inject. I know you can't really see my face. You fix me on the body, yaddy, 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 Okay, so, again, with your clean hands, we get the needle out, you twist the needle, just fix me on my body, yaddy, again, twist the needle, nice and sharp, 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 we take this into over there, we take this one out, put it onto this side, we get the BPC-157 that we have, let's say, that I have, formulated together. Sugar, spice, and everything nice. Thus, the Powerpuff Girls were born using their ultra superpowers. So we're only doing, I didn't even talk about dosages, but it's not really that deep, but anyway, I might as well say this, I take about 16 units, you know, around 16, 15 units, which is about two, around, it's not really accurate, but around a 250 MCG, because this is in units, not MCG around 250 so yes around 16 units or so i draw the air off 16 units around i do it from the side air pressure yes and now as you can see i now take it in side all you to see the bp swap i said actually <laughs> okay so i take it from the side it goes in see the, all of, see, the, see how the air just pushed out all the pressure so you bring it forward now all you need is 16 units. Okay, so this needs to be upside down, as you can see. It's not very clear, and then we just draw 16. So, there. I'll do this now, because I cannot see from there. 16, there we go. Uh -huh. Take it up, right. Flick, get the air bubbles out. Boom, ba da bum 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 ba da bum bum so, see all these air bubbles? You don't want them there. Take it up, 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 up. Right. What's I'm gonna do? It's not really as long as it seems, because I'm explaining it. Grab the sight area. This is good for the sight area. I do it around the sight. I'm going to do it on this side, around here. I don't really have, this took me forever because I don't really have much fat around my knee, which, which took forever to actually find fat. But you want to try and pick a fat point because you know it's going into the body. The body. You want to pick a fat area so you don't hit any nerves, etc. Clean it with, you know, the antibacterial wipes because you are going to, you know, inject. 
what you're gonna do, you should be standing up technically, but I can do sit down. You wanna put the weight onto the opposite leg. So the body, this is, the side that you're injecting is free, is dangling. So now we're ready to massage, he's fat. He's fat. He's fat. He's fat. grab a pinch of your fat which is quite hard for me to find but I finally found it so just let your body relax pinch it there you go now you go up and go straight into the body okay so three two one I can't I can't do this I don't I don't I don't get some quick cut get it in there right Get in! I'm joking. <laughs> okay, let's go. So up, pinch the skin, right? Pinch, again, relax the legs. Pinch the skin together, up, and just go straight in. Boom. Right, hold it, needle. And then, I'm not sure you can see from your end. All you do is put the substances into the knee. And we are good. So wait for like a few seconds, make sure it's fully in. Relax. Right, and we're gonna pinch it out in three, two. I can't get it out. It's stuck. It's actually, no, it's actually stuck. <laughs> it's actually, I'm joking, okay? So now we get it out. There you go, do you see any blood? Did we die? Did we die? No. Then you get another fresh pair of antibacterial wipes. Do you see any blood live? No, you don't see blood because that's how you do it. You're only professional about it. And then you just dab it, massage the area. And we're good, I literally should do this twice a day. So for two weeks, I'm gonna do this twice a day and I'm gonna do it once a day for the, for the next um, five or five, four other weeks. I'm gonna do this for six weeks. And that's what I need to do. I don't need to be doing this for a lifetime. Again, you can dose it slowly. I am, I'm gonna say this again, I am not a doctor. So you do things at your own risk. So yeah. That is how I inject my BPC body protective compound into my system to help preserve, keep me injury free. And of course, stop me from doing stupidity again. No more jump squats. No more. I'm getting older. When you get older, you start becoming more wiser. And that's what age is. Age becomes wisdom. So yeah, let me just take this up so you can see me. Wrapping this all up, I really hope this can just put an insight in what you can do when you're looking to really seriously improve your health you know, when you have pain, you go out there and try and find solutions. Because sometimes the GP, well, UK, we call it GP, NHS, it's a waste of time. You've got to do your own knowledge and research. And this is safe. Yes, they still say it is not 100% human, you know, for human use, etc. But this has been proven that this stuff, it works. Again, I am not a doctor. I don't take, I don't, I don't advise you to take anything. You need to go away and do your own research. But this can help you if you have usually acute injuries, niggling, shoulder pain, you know, maybe your lower back your knees, the stuff that you usually get when you train. Even when you have good form, these stuff are bound to happen when you go and train in the gym. And it's what you do after it. It's the aftercare that's, that's really important. It's not just the training. I always tell people you have your training phases. Most people don't even know about rest. It's the aftercare. It's how you rest. It's how you recover. It's also going away and doing your own stretching, your own mobility to mobilize the joints. It comes back, you know, the, the joints come back better. Things you can do to even just mobilize the joints, like stuff like this, like you got, for example, your knee. Things I like to do to, to help preserve and strength, strengthen you. You can't just sit, sit on your couch at home or, or whilst you're resting. Go go for like walks. Walks is low impact. Go for walks and slowly start climbing up the stairs and up down up and down the stairs. You want to strengthen. You want to strengthen the tissue so it, get, it gets used to it. It's healing, but it still needs exercises for it to be strong. You can't just sit on a couch and just hope to be better. You need to go out there and strengthen the injured area, whatever, shoulders, whatever, and then slowly come back into the gym and you slowly do, you know, rehabilitation kind of slow progress, training, get yourself back into where you was. And that's how you build strength. Even when, you're, when people have bad knees from jumping squats and stuff like that, or what they call it, runner's knee, etc. You, you actually go back and you start, do you, you, when you when you come back for recovery, you do do jumping stuff, but you do it very slowly and you do it very lightweight. You never go heavy ever again. You start very light, you want to strengthen your knees. You can come at these exercises when you come when you when you do it slowly with less weight. The body can adapt to that. Ooh, that was was that a long video? Because I feel like I was here for time, moving the camera everywhere, etc. etc. But yes, that's what I usually literally do. I'm on week two now, then I have another four weeks to go, and then that's it. 
my, my knees should be back. And the thing is, I've been doing this for a week. My knees are really starting to feel better. It's the small stuff that we don't think about. It's like get up, get up and down from your bed, get up and getting up and down from the toilet seats, going in and in and out of your bath. You know, climbing upstairs. This is a little niggling I'd feel. But now, just getting up and down, you don't feel it. I, I don't feel it. It's not a placebo effect. I just don't feel it. And I know this stuff works. Anyway, I'm not a doctor again. Do your own research. And yeah, let's continue to go out there and just continue to live. Let's continue to live to make history. Why? Because you and I, we also have one space and time. We have one life. Let's go crush. Stay safe. Use your mind, use your knowledge, and continue making history. Good evening. So, remember I said we do this twice, then we'll show how I do before going to bed. Bear in mind, we've already resuscitated this in the previous videos. All we need to do is get the needle, draw it out, inject in the fat legs. <laughs> we need to inject, and that's it. Keeping it really simple. So, I'm just going to show you the evening, my night routine, alcohol, alcohol swabs, of course, health is wealth. Clean the top. Of the BPC 157, put this away. Then, of course, sight area. So, this is the injured leg, of course. Well, it's healing. So, we're gonna get another clean alcohol swab, of course. We're going to the sight area, right? The sight. So, clean anywhere near the knee. So yeah, just clean around the knee, make sure it's nice and clean. I just had a shower as well anyway, so my body will be nice and warm. Then, we get the insulin syringe. Do, 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 do. In the shadow. Make sure it's locked, still twisted a bit to keep, make sure that it doesn't, it's not loose. The injection needle, 16 units, draw 16 units of air, take this to the side. Now we just inject, keep it really simple. So, to the side, then we inject, upside down. Okay, so we need 16 units of BPC 157. We do it slowly so we do not get any air bubbles or we try and get minimum air bubbles. Bubbles! Turn upside down, you take it out. Slowly take it out so we do not waste any BPC 157. Place this down safely. Turn upside down. I mean, up upright. Flick, 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 flick. Get any of the air bubbles out. Air bubbles will go to the top once you flick. Slowly push it onto it. Get any air bubbles out. Flick again. Now we grab. We grab and pinch. Really simple. Grab, pinch, inject. So I'm not sure if you can see from there. I'm not sure if it's clear. So I'm going to. Put the pressure onto the other side of the leg, this leg, this leg is going to be relaxed. So grab the fat area, I'm not sure you can see, shell is in there. So we grab, as you can see, and then we pinch. So relax the other leg, pinch, in it goes, straight in, into that fat. We inject it slowly, we wait for about three to five seconds, make sure it's fully in. Oh, 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 staying alive, staying alive. Then we release it slowly. We pull it out. Are we bleeding? Of course not. Health is truly well. So, I guess I'm flexing it because I'm just actually like that. Of course, what we're going to do, we're going to get another alcohol swab. A fresh, clean alcohol thing running out. <laughs> get another fresh alcohol swab. Course. <laughs> then we dab the area and that's it keeping it really simple minimum blood there's not even, there's not even any blood anyway so you put and that's how we do it I did this twice a day for about six weeks and that's how I'm gonna heal this injury just hopefully it just goes because it just makes me just realize how we need to be thinking smart train safe health is truly well what I want to say real quickly as well is make sure whenever you're training this over and over again you are mindful of the stuff that you are doing make sure you do not injure yourself you want to have a quality training session anyway we are out this gaff we're going to continue making history let's continue to go <laughs>